Hey guys, Snibs here. Just wanted to do another video. Um, picked up another new uh, revolver. Um, got a Charter Arms Bulldog in 44 Special, and that was a new caliber for me. Um, I already had the 44 mag, 44 Special die, so didn't need to buy anything new there. <clears throat> Found a guy online, um, Adam Helgeberger or something like that. Uh, his uh, website is honestlyevil.com. Um, if you're looking for brass, he's got just about anything you could want. Um, I think I bought everything he had of 44 Special, but um, he uh, his prices are real reasonable. Um, and uh, fast shipping, shipping's included with the price of the brand, you know, the original price. There's no shipping added on or anything like that. So um, <clears throat> I get away from that real quick, though. But I bought, I contacted him. It was showing he was out of 44 Special. But I contacted him because I bought a couple of lots from him before I contacted him uh, on MeWe. And uh, <clears throat> he said he thought he did. He checked into it. And uh, he put a special link up for me just to uh, to buy what he had. He put it up as 250 And uh, <clears throat> I'm finding that uh, it's actually closer to 400 pieces of brass that he sent me. Um, I'm loading some up. That's why I'm kind of doing this video today. But so this between those two buckets here, that's that's a hundred pieces right there that I primed and started to load. And I'll show you those in a minute. But this is what's left over. These ones have already resized. There's probably sixty-five or seventy there, and there's at least another hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty in this uh, bucket that I haven't even touched yet. So. <clears throat> does a great does a great business uh anyway. so look them up if you need some brass um so what i'm doing today is uh again 44 special uh <clears throat> i've got some uh got some lee they're supposed to be 200 greens uh 0.429 they are dropping right at 0.429 i didn't even have to resize them at all or anything with that um I tumble lubed them with uh, a locks and uh but they're weighing at closer to 210 which is okay because my my lineman book actually has a recipe for 210 so i didn't have to do any guesswork with my my charge weight um and uh using my my lee powder shooter measure uh with some uh, tight group and uh what i'm doing is uh starting out with 4.7 grains um of tight group and 4.7 it actually shows 4.6 is the minimum load and like 5.6 is the maximum load so I, I just went to 4.7 just so i wasn't right at the minimum but this will just be, it's not going to be anything more than a, a planking gun for, you know, steel plates and stuff at the, at the range anyway. So, um, I don't need anything super fast or going to beat up my, my old charter arms. This, I'll show you, uh, this is the first half of a video. It's raining right now, but it's supposed to stop a little while. And, uh, I'm going to take that over to the range and do a video, um, <clears throat> actually, show you that gun and shoot it in a little bit and uh we'll uh get a look at that so anyway um i'm out here in the garage uh you know watching some videos uh david drake posted up a couple of new videos so he's got a new 22 and he was talking about the uh ruger takeover of marlin and how that might play out so but uh been using my i, I have a texan uh press but i also bought this rcbs junior three a while back and i wanted to give that a little run and see how that works um <clears throat> and i think i like it a lot um got it for pretty pretty good price real good price um so i was gonna i had some 44 mag brass that uh probably 50 or 60 pieces that uh, i hadn't loaded yet for my uh, other two 44 mags and I was going to resize them. I bought a, a cutter and everything to uh, trim them down, but <clears throat> found this great deal on 
this uh, 44 mag bra or 44 special brass so I bought that and I can save them 50 pieces and load them up for my uh, I've got a super Blackhawk and I've got a uh, model 29 so anyway I'll do a couple of rounds and let you guys see the process and uh, and then I'll uh, cut it off and after that it'll be me at the range shooting some of these so anyway um, again I got this set up for 4.7 grains um, got my RCBS scale over there and that's set up for 4.7 I check it every so often 10 20 drops just to make sure nothing's changed and it really never does so this is a very reliable uh, scale or a uh, powder measure for <clears throat> I found for for pistol type uh, ammo in, in the, the flake stuff uh, or ball little balls um, this stuff for like rifle powder that's more of stick type don't seem to feed into that as well as it should and uh, you end up with some some pretty good variation in, in charge weight but this this flake stuff this tight group is very very fine almost like a flower um, and stuff like uh, red red dot really meters well in this as well um, so if you're doing pistols great and you know even if you're off by you know you know less than a tenth of a grain there's no big deal, but when I was doing some rifle stuff, I found a variation of plus and minus about one tenth, so not not great. I mean, if you're just doing plank and ammo, that still would be okay, as long as you're not doing max loads, uh, which I never do. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, this is a great great powder measure. Um, I've got this uh, RCBS Junior Three, <clears throat> and uh, I do have my little little checker here that I can check to make sure it's going to fit in the cylinder. So I shoot one little measure. I always look inside to make sure there's what looks like the proper powder shot in there. Cause, you know, I have got plenty of powder in there, but you know, you get going along, you might run out and not even notice. Um, set a bullet on top and then run it up through. And, uh, just give it a look, make sure everything looks okay. A lot of people like their progressives and you know with everything going on. It's I've, I've watched the setup on those. It looks really complicated. I so far I've got enough time to be able to sit here and work my single stage. It's relaxing. And I actually started out using the uh, the lead classic loaders, the hammer loaders with a rubber mallet, and I still have those and do use them for certain um, calibers um, but the more that I'm getting into having uh, multiple guns of a particular caliber um, I just find that when you use a, a real press with a full length die so <clears throat> that the rounds will fit uh, those two or three different guns that you might have, uh, it actually works a lot better. <clears throat> For instance, and I already talked about these, I have a Super Blackhawk that seems to have a really a much looser cylinder chamber uh, than my Smith & Wesson Model 29. Um, so when I fire rounds out of that 20, or Super Blackhawk, yeah, Super Blackhawk, and then I just do the, the hammer loader to reload those. It only does, all it does is it pinches the neck. So you get neck tension for the bullet. It doesn't resize the whole brass. And <clears throat> what happens is now it's expanded. I reload it, try to put it in a model 29 and it won't even go into the cylinder because it's expanded into that Ruger Blackhawk cylinder size. So. Um, you know, for some guns like my 223, uh, I like the neck size them because I've already sized that brass to my my axis, which is super accurate. And so, uh, and I've got some brass that I've done that loaded 15, 16 times. So <clears throat> that's the thing is when you full length size a brass, it, it shortens the life of it because you're working that whole thing in and out. 
<clears throat> when you only neck size it, you're only squeezing that little end of the neck so the bullet will have tension to stay in there. So if you fire form your brass to a particular rifle, you can use those hammer loaders and, and they work great. And I can load faster with one of those than I can with a single stage. But anyway, um, enough rambling. <clears throat> I, uh, like I said, I'm, it's raining right now. I was out getting some snow off the roof and then it started raining. So I decided to come out here for a little while and get some of these done up. And uh, hopefully it's supposed to stop raining in a couple hours and I'll have a little bit of daylight left at the end of the day to get over to uh, the range and try out this, this new Bulldog. And I also uh, bought a Remington Model 51, not an R51, a Model 51. It was made in uh, 1920, and uh, that uh, is a pretty cool gun too, so I'll be doing a video on that one too. It'll be a separate video from the Charter Arms one, but <clears throat> take a look for that one too. So Anyway, that's uh, that's what I got going on today. Um, maybe I'll take a 22 over there too just to have it and punch it too. <clears throat> the new metal roof on the house is working out good. We've got uh, the snow sliding off. I gave this coaxing it a little bit in a couple of spots where it was a little sticky, but it came right off. So not having a bunch of snow load like we used to have with the shingles and everything. So. <clears throat> anyway, stay tuned for the uh, range part. Hey friends, Nibs again. Uh, this is uh, part two of a video I started earlier this morning. Uh, this, yeah, it was in the morning. Um, I was out in my garage doing some reloading, um, finishing up this uh, <clears throat> round of uh, 44 special ammo that I just started. Uh, earlier this week. I just got the brass uh, in the mail earlier in the week and, uh, and actually I had uh, just got this um, Charter Arms Bulldog in 44 Special um, and uh, just picked this one up, brought, got to bring it home, uh, I think it was Thursday. Um, pretty neat gun. It's actually feels pretty light. I've got a Charter Arms uh, Pitbull in 45 ACP as well, and uh, that one definitely seems to have a little, quite a bit more heft. I don't know it's how much difference 44 Special and 45 ACP really kind of uh, are close as far as specs go anyway, um, so I don't know why there would be so much of a difference in, in weight and feel, but um, this one... Um, Picked it up pretty cheap. Uh, it doesn't have the original grips on it. I don't know if I'm, they look like they're pretty nice grips, but they are very poorly uh, finished right now. Um, they look like they might have some nice wood under there. So I might strip them down and try to redo them. Um, or I may just look for some original grips. Uh, I do like to keep, especially this is an older one, I like to keep, uh, keep them looking kind of original and nice and everything, so. Uh, anyway, so this one, um, I, I, I tried looking up the serial numbers, really, I don't find any reference of uh, um, any, like, serial number lists like you can find for, like, Smith & Wesson or Colt or whatever um, for these, but I did find some uh, some information about the company, so I kind of got a, a range of uh, when it could have been made. Um, this one was... Uh, produced in Stratford, Connecticut, and the company was only in Stratford, Connecticut until 1980. So these were made between, these were introduced in 1973. So this particular one was made somewhere between that 73 to 1980 uh, time frame. Um, another thing that I know, um, I've seen some more recent, and even this is still available as a new production gun, but it's uh, actually quite a bit different. Um, than, than these older ones. Um, and one of the things that's different, and I don't know when they started it, but a lot like a, a lot like the newer Smith & Wesson revolvers, they have a little shroud that goes around the, uh, the ejector rod 
to protect that um, a little bit. <clears throat> and these older ones didn't have that, so when you, you flip it open, it gets your projector red coming out. But um, so anyway, that's uh, a little different on these older ones. So that's another feature that lets me know that this is somewhat of an older one. Um, anyway, the um, the Bulldog was available in 44 Special and in 357. And the main difference, other than the caliber, is, is the 44 Special uh, is only a five shot. That's the same as uh, my Pitbull. That's uh, I have the Pitbull in 45 ACP. That's also a five shot. I also have a, a, I think they call it an Undercover Special or something like that. That's a small 38 Special, which is pretty much a copy of a. Uh, Smith and Wesson model 36. That one uh, is also a five shot, but that's 38 special. So it's a pretty cool gun. Um, took a couple shots with this already, and there is a little problem with the Paul pushing the cylinder every once in a while. So I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, probably just needs to be taken apart and cleaned up inside. Uh, literally got this Thursday, and I just gave it a once over on the outside, but I didn't. Uh, do anything internally with it but so here we go it's not failed so far this time but um i did have one time when i was shooting a double action and it just struck the old primer again because it didn't rotate so um it is what it is it's an old gun got it for cheap so what am i gonna do <laughs> anyway uh load up the first uh five rounds here these are uh as you saw in the beginning of this video um these are uh, 44 special. These are, the mold says they're supposed to be uh, 200 grain, but they're casting out at more like clo very close to 210 grains. Uh, round nose, um, 0.429, just like a 44 mag or 44 special should have. Um, and uh, loaded them with 4.7 grains of uh, tight group. <clears throat> And uh, that should be pushing these at about 850 foot per second. Um, and these, the, this load could go up to as much as 5.6, and I could get close to 950 out of it. But it's just for bringing out plinking. And even if I was to, you know, carry this or whatever, uh, you know, getting hit with a 200 grain bullet at 850 is uh, not going to be a great day. So. I'm really not looking to push it and uh, you know these older guns are they've lived their life and uh, now they're gonna live in a lap of luxury at my house so um, and not be uh, pushed too hard so I'm gonna put my ears in we'll shoot a couple rounds here um, so one thing I'm looking for a little bit of help from uh, the, the uh, the audience here, I guess I call them, uh, is recently I've been using my iPhone 10 to uh, record these videos, and uh, I've had some complaints about the audio not being great. Um, and I'd like a little bit of maybe some uh, suggestions on how to resolve that. Um, and uh, the, one of the main things that I notice is after I shoot the iPhone 10. Um, is doing is muting the audio it's really clamping the audio down um, to where it takes you can hear the shot but if I start talking right after I shoot it uh, barely can hear it at all it takes like five or ten seconds for that to come back in so um, previously I, I've had an iPhone 6 and an iPhone 7 and I never had any issues with that with those uh, with uh, sound quality like that so I don't know if there's any suggestions you guys can give me. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Um, you know, maybe an external microphone that I could uh, clip on and wear and that wouldn't have that problem or uh, or even suggest a, a, a decent uh, external camera, you know, a, a, another camera that I could use uh, altogether that uh, would give me good audio and good video quality. I really love the video quality of this iPhone 10. It's much better than the 7 ever was. Um, no, anyway, enough, enough rambling. So, we'll, uh...
one that didn't rotate back there. So I had one one failure to rotate there. So um, I'll take it apart a little bit and clean it up when I get home and see if I can. Uh, it's pro it, I looked at it and it looks like it's just barely missing the, the tooth there when it spins. So I don't know what uh, could be the problem there, but. That one spun, that one spun, so. Uh, I'm shooting, got a target out there about 10 yards. I'm going to go grab it. It's nothing, nothing spectacular to look at. So I did do another, uh, stick up another target here uh, to shoot the charter arms at. Uh, again, still shooting at about 10 yards, uh, which is typical pistol length. Uh, don't pay any attention to these little ones over here. Those are 22s. I was shooting from my uh, high standard Model A, just out here plinking with that too. Shot a little over there with it too, but um, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick little view of. I uh, had a couple of flyers. It's just me, kind of annoying, but uh, this is overall that's 10 shots uh, at 10 yards. Um, several, several in the 10, quite a few in the 9, another in the 8. It's a uh, Pretty accurate little uh, handgun. I think it's only like a three inch barrel, um, maybe a three and a half inch, something like that. Uh, but uh, that's my uh, 210 grain hand loads, uh, doing pretty good. All right, thanks. But uh, they're all center target, uh, you know, uh, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper is all center of that piece of paper pretty well. Um, that's the uh, second and third uh, magazine full or uh, cylinder full I've shot out of it. So um, definitely a good, uh, if I can resolve that rotation problem, it'll definitely be a good uh, personal defense gun if I ever plan to. It's got some bark to it, that's for sure. Um, I, uh, it really does remind me of, uh, I, you know, like I said, I have a couple of uh, revolvers. I also have a uh, Ruger Vaquero uh, that's chambered for 45 coal and 45 ACP. And uh, this round really reminds me so much of how that 45 ACP shoots out of a revolver. So um, anyway, I hope you like this video. Um, if you've got any suggestions about this rotation, uh, I'd really be happy to hear about it in the comments and uh, um, whatever I can do to take care of that. But uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Um, down, subscribe to my channel. Um, and also down in the description, I'll have a, uh, a link uh, to my Patreon uh, account. And if you want to take a look at that and give, me, give that a consideration, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and also uh, take a look on uh, Facebook if you're on there or on MeWe for uh, Walnut and Steel uh, Vintage Firearms uh, channel. Got a lot of great guys on both of those uh, platforms and uh, we have a great time talking about older stuff. Uh, I did a video already and I'm gonna post it up of my uh, Remington Model 51 as well. Another uh, new acquisition that I have and uh, Anyway, it's a great day. It's uh, end of February uh, in upstate New York, and I'm out here in just uh, shirt sleeves, so uh, can't be too bad. So hope you all have a great day. Be safe. Thanks. Bye.